As the great commercial in the 90s once said, what's up? This is Syracuse Sports presented by Krause Health, the official healthcare partner for SU Athletics. I promise I, I won't do that again. So great to have you here, friends. How are you here? Spotify? Apple? YouTube? String with uh, two cans on the end of it? I don't care how you're listening, how you're watching. We're just happy you're here. Thank you for making this little show a part of your day. And what a show we've got for you, friends. Felicia Leggett jack head coach, Syracuse women's basketball. They're the three seed in the ACC tournament. They are fighting for a home game in the NCAA tournament. They're right there on the line. You look at bracketology, Syracuse has just been knocking on that door. you got to be a top four seed, top 16 seed overall, one of the top four seeds to get a home game, to get a, what can be a home pod. If you win, you stay at home, and then... There's a regional in, happens to be Albany, New York, in the NCAA tournament this year. So it is all ahead of this Syracuse women's basketball team after uh, a successful season, tied for the highest bid they've had in the ACC tournament. What a turnaround for Coach Jack's team as last year they came this close, right there to making the NCAA tournament. They didn't get in. This year they are safely in the field. They're just fighting for seeding and just how far can it go. We talk about all that with Coach Jack, her personal journey this year. She went through a health scare at the beginning of the season and a lot of fun things that we discussed with Coach Jack. So I'm really looking forward to you hearing that conversation, and it's coming up here shortly. A couple of things uh, to take care of before we do hear our conversation with Coach Jack. One, going to be another busy week here on Syracuse Sports. Tuesday night, Syracuse, Clemson, Men's basketball, regular season finale. It is as big as it gets for Syracuse that's trying to fight its way into the NCAA tournament conversation. They are fighting for a double bye in the ACC tournament. They are fighting to finish fourth, maybe fifth in the ACC. A team pick to finish 10th in the ACC. Can Adrian Autry work his way into possibly be being named the coach of the year in the ACC. I think Coach Jack, it's the flat-out no-brainer pick to be coach of the year in the ACC, and we'll see how that plays out this week. But we will be with you with Syracuse basketball post game following Syracuse and Clemson on Tuesday night. Also joining, in this, joining us this week, pardon me, is Kevin Connors. He is an ESPN studio host, huge college basketball fan, Huge Syracuse fan, Ithaca grad, and somebody that I have really enjoyed talking to through the years. Doesn't hide his orange fandom on the airwaves of ESPN, and he's right there in the thick of it. I want to get his perspective on Syracuse, on its fight for the tournament, on Coach Autry, the ACC, and what's going on with the net rankings. Maybe he can kind of make sense of what's happening in college basketball these days. So we'll talk to Kevin Connors later this week. We are also going to talk to Eric Devendorf. Yeah, Devo, coming on the show later this week. There's so much we can talk about with Devendorf. He follows his team closely, so he'll certainly have some passionate opinions on it. But one thing I'm really curious and interested to talk to Devo about this week is is a budding career as a broadcaster and is starting to get more assignments as a color analyst. And I think that Wherever it shall be, ESPN, ACC Network, whoever wants to put him on their airwaves as a, a star on the rise here. So I want to get Eric's perspective on digging more into the television world and how that's going for him. And I mean, Devo is just always fun to talk to. So we will do that on Syracuse Sports this week as well. So we've got a busy week ahead. We're glad you're a part of it. And we are also glad that you are a Syracuse Sports Insider. And if you're not, We'd love for you to join the community. Being a Syracuse Sports Insider means that you get to text me directly anytime you want with your questions, your thoughts, your opinions. Certainly during games, a very active back and forth going on between myself and the Syracuse Sports Insiders. You get priority on this podcast and our Syracuse basketball postgame show. Our conversation today with Coach Jack was definitely shaped by the questions and comments set in by our Syracuse Sports Insiders. Breaking news, tidbits, information you only get as a Syracuse Sports Insider. Here's how you become one. Just text the word ORANGE to 315-847-3895. You'll get a link. Sign up. Here's the cool thing about being a Syracuse Sports Insider. You can try it free for two weeks. Give it a run. See if you like it, and then it's just $3.99 a month after that. I promise you I'm worth the 4 bucks a month. 
one last cup of coffee or boys there's not a lot you can only get for four bucks left these days so hey we're worth it we love having you we love seeing the community grow and we'd love for you to be a part of it so we'd uh, certainly appreciate it if you gave us a shot and became a syracuse sports insider today let's do it coach jack get ready to get fired up friends the head coach of the syracuse women's basketball team joins us now Coach, there's so much we could start with, but I feel like we've got to start with uh, the history that De'Asia Fair has made before our very eyes here and will continue to make as far as this postseason journey will go for you. Seeing her career coming down the home stretch here and, and the records that she has set and the accomplishments that she has made here, what drives her? What, what makes her the player that she is from what you've seen? Her story, you know, she's come from a, a, a tough background and uh, one of four children that helped, had to help her mom raise the other three and uh, they did it together and they did it with no apologies or um, they had never asked for handouts. They just stuck together and uh, found a way. And the time came when, you know, she was playing basketball and they thought that she was good enough to, to go to the next level and she didn't even know what the next level was. What was division one? What was division two? And uh, not a lot of people was looking at her, and we got very lucky and blessed to to, to know that, you know, um, Sierra Dillard was from that area and said, you got to come look at this kid. She's pretty special. And we, when we found out about her, we kind of went 100 miles an hour uh, to try to give her an opportunity. And um, she, she just is so thankful and grateful that all she did was work to try to earn every single day uh, her opportunity to be wherever she was. Coach, uh, Jim Beheim tells a story about how uh, his assistant coach in 2003, 2002, Troy Weaver says, we got to go to Baltimore to see this kid. And that turned out to be Carmelo Anthony, right? And they knew, they watch him for five minutes, and they're like, okay, yeah, like I get why you dragged me down here to see it. You just brought up the coach that brought your attention to DeAsia. Do you have Do you have a story like that where you went to see her and you're like, okay, yeah, I've, I've got to get this this kid on my roster? Well, they brought her to, to, to our camp, and um, Sierra Diller was my former player, and she was from Rochester, and she said that I got to go back to Rochester because this is a young kid that's there that's really pretty special. Back then, she was in the eighth, seventh, eighth grade, and then, you know, you hear that, then you kind of let it go, and then by her junior year, my assistant coach, Kristen Sharkey, went to watch her play uh, AAU basketball only in Rochester because it was a small town, small little area, no, no national uh, at all and so she brought she came to our camp in her junior year and i'm like this is a young lady that you've been talking about she's like hmm. this tall she is this tall <laughs> and i knew she was better than a lot of people that was at our camp but i need to find out for myself so i checked ball with her and uh it was two on two and i couldn't beat her and back then i was playing at a high clip and uh i said this is a kid and i'm asking who's recruiting her and she had nobody recruiting her and so that summer, I followed her all around the, the country where her team was still in a small little venue, but out in the big areas, you know, in the, um, in Atlanta, Atlanta area. And we're like, we were sitting there, Coach Sharkey and I, we're sitting there like, nobody's at this court but us, <laughs> Are y'all crazy? And so we actually enjoyed that experience. And then we, she'll go play in the big venue, the big Boo Williams, whatever the tournament was in Atlanta. I don't even know. Um, and I'm in the back corner watching this young lady and nobody even we're at Buffalo and nobody thinks that we know what we're doing. And we're like, this is going to be easier than I thought. And she made a commitment to us and we helped her with her academics and, uh, the rest is history. You know, sometimes you got to go with your own gut. And, and that's what we did as a coaching staff and, uh, 33,300 and some odd points later, here we are. Incredible to think about, Coach. And, and now that we're here and we're at the end of the road, you're, you're kind of facing that challenge and that question of how do you replace a player like De'Asia Fair? No, you don't replace her at all. You know, you, you're not going to not miss her. You're not going to miss hanging out with her in your office. You're not going to not miss, you know, all those things are, are, are part of who she is and it made me who I am through this era of her, her, her time. You know, like it was with Sierra Dillard and Stephanie Reed and those names like that. But you just got to gotta continue on. And we got some special kids coming here next year. And I think that you guys will be proud of as well. 
they have a story to tell. They got a, a venue that, 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 you know, show their story on, which is at, at, at JMA Dome. And our goal is to, to make, make it even higher and grow this thing even more uh, uh, at a higher level. And so, yeah, we're going to miss the Asia for sure. And we got to get her to her next step, which is, in my opinion, a W or overseas and uh, making a lot of money because what she can do now is different than what she can do back then. Back then, she didn't know any better. The light's on now for sure. Maybe it's some of those traits you've mentioned, Coach, but stepping up to the pros, whatever level it is, as you mentioned, overseas or in the WNBA, what will make her successful at the next level? Somebody believing in her. She's one of those people that, she's just like me. I, I don't work for Syracuse University. I work for the people at Syracuse University. I, and you will get more from me if you have an engagement with me because I'm a people person. She's a people person as well. And whoever gets her, if they can spend the time to get to know her and, and really enter that shell of, of that personality that seems a little bit closed off, you're going to find that diamond that you're looking for. Uh, she she will impress you. She will work hard for you if she knows she can trust you and you believe in her. Coach, circling back to where you're at now, I've, I've heard you say that this is the most fun team that you've been around. Where, where does that come from? Where does that spirit come from on this team? The Asia, the Asia Fair, mm. Georgia Woolley, uh, you know, it's, they, they have been just remarkable. Kyra Wood is one of our captains as well. She brings that energy and enthusiasm, and and, and they don't need a lot of help. They're not one of those teams that you got to go and say, okay, she's in class. Okay, we're good. They're going to be sitting in the classroom. Not only that, they're going to be in the top first three rows. They're going to be 3.0 students. They're going to have high character behind my back. They're going to Everybody's going to be looking at them like, Oh, who's this young lady? She's so special. Oh, she's on the women's basketball team too. That's what kind of team this is. This is like less overhead, a lot of, lot of, you know, meat for for your money. Uh, they they love to laugh. They they love to laugh at themselves. And and so I can get after them hard, and and then we can joke about it. Like, coach, you was yelling at me. That stuff come out your mouth. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I'm still right here. We're still on the court, you know, and we have. I can be my my authentic self with them. And there's no like, well, she yelled at me. I'm going to go, you know, tell somebody. Yeah, but you yell back. And we we got after it and we we, we solved the problem. And that's what kind of team this is. I'm, I don't want this thing to end for a long, long time for sure. Coach, it's interesting to hear you say that about it. As a coach, you do have to raise your voice sometimes. But I found, you know, my daughter is 17. And there's something about this generation of her generation that you don't yell at them you talk mm -hmm. to them and i've yeah. i've heard you say that as a coach that you maybe have found more success when you just talk to them why do you think that this generation gets that message more in that way from your experience this thing here mm -hmm. this phone and and and, uh, and I, I don't know if it's always right but it's you gotta adjust you know and that's the thing about being in this business for 35 years, you adjust with the people that you, you were able to coach. And this is a group here that I can be myself. Some days I'm going to be tough on them. Some days I'm going to be passionate about the, the, the win one for the Gipper. But sometimes I'm going to have to talk through the Gipper speech. And you know, I, I guess got to read their eyes. I was a psych major, thank God, because, you know, I got to I gotta meet them where they are. And lately, last two months, where they are, they just said, coach, coach us. Just coach us. And if I have a problem with you, I'll give you a call or I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell the assistant coach. And it's been a pure joy, pure joy. These are my daughters and I love each and say, each one of them. That relates to something else you said that I wanted to ask you about coach. And, and you said that they've bought in and I, I've heard coaches say that before, but when they buy in with you, what are they purchasing? Um, someone's just going to, you know, they, they ask you to run through the wall and, and you're not going to have to realize what wall to run through because there's going to be a crack in one wall already, the one I already went through for them. And it's going to be easy to go through that wall because I'm going to do anything and everything I can to help them reach their dreams. And they, they, they're, they're going to have to be able to handle the tough love because at the end of the day, this is not just growing a basketball team. This is a microcosm of life. And these young ladies that I coach might be the breadwinners of their families. 
might be the one that may not have nobody but themselves, or they might have to raise their, their siblings later on in life uh, because they're all they have. And they have to be able to stand on that and stand in that and, and become uh, that person for their family. And so we're going to equip them for the road ahead. And in that locker room is why our young ladies stay and be a part of our program because we get down to the real life stuff. And so that's what they buy into, the, the, the truth of the matter, not get kids through the four years of their career or that one year to help you get a contract or whatever. I'm, I'm in it for something different. I, I'm, I'm coming from a, a fire coach's perspective where I don't have a lot of time to, to negotiate the truth. I tell you the truth because tomorrow's not promised. And so if I, all I have today is today, I got to get you ready for what's it's in store for you for your tomorrows. And if I get a tomorrow and get blessed with a tomorrow, I'll give you more of what I can offer you. But right now, I always work under the premise that you don't have a tomorrow. Coach, from all these lessons here, as, as you cross over in, into the postseason here, there, there's two things about your team I wanted to ask you about that maybe all these lessons apply to it, but I want to get your perspective on. One is, why is this team, why does the light come on in the fourth quarter? so much for your squad? We've seen it time and again this year. Well, last year, your question would be, why won't the light come on in the fourth <laughs> quarter? Because we had terrible fourth quarters. We addressed it. We we address it. And, you know, we just don't really plan on that. But if we have more time to get out of the hole of an 18-point deficit or a 19-point deficit, we're going to work to the last horn sound. And it just so happens that we put ourselves in a quandary in fourth quarters a lot this year. But we realize now we don't have to succumb to it. And so we don't. And we fight to the finish. The other thing there is what you seem to hang your hat on, and in your case it would be a hard hat, right, is <laughs> rebounding and the importance of rebounding. And, again, I think a lot of basketball coaches say that. But it feels like it's personal to you does that come from your playing days and and carrying that over to look we've seen this game evolve where you know players want it they all want to be steph curry or deja fair in that case or caitlin clark and shoot threes and just kind of stand out that way maybe getting them to, to really emphasize and focus on a grind like rebounding may be a challenge these days but it's not for your team why is that well i'm one of those crazy coaches who have lost their opportunity from coaching uh, in the past, I believe winning is easy. And I think that the, the, the easy part is the hard work. And I believe that if you zip it down, put it in, zip it up, it's your heart. And rebounding is all about heart. Is Every single possession, I got to battle your heart, I win. Because I don't take the court thinking about beating you because it's not about you. It's about my story. And it's about our story. It's about Syracuse story. It's about this university story. It's about this community story. And we need to let people know our story. And that's through our heart. And our heart is our rebounding. And in 18, we can win a game and we get out-rebounded. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth as their head coach. And, and I think that they respond, coach, kids respond to your, to your head coach. And I think that they understand the assignment due to the fact that we get after them about the rebounding piece of the ball. You've mentioned a couple times that that opportunity that you lost at, in the, at Indiana. And look, in coaching, you go through it. God knows in my industry, there's people that go through it and get fired. And, and it's just something you have to, to learn from, right? What did you take from that experience, even to this day as a coach? And, and what did you learn from that? You know, my whole reason for being in this business is to, to help young women, young people in general, rise above their circumstances. And it gave me uh, that platform. Uh, and then that platform was taken away. And that, that, that hurt my heart because that's what my whole passion is about, is help young people through the game of basketball. And so when I got fired, I realized that I have to find another way to help these young people because that's what I think he put me on earth to do. And he gave me an opportunity to continue to do this thing, this basketball, which I love to coach. And... I, I realized that tomorrow could not be promised. And, and so I think I've, I became more astute 
when it comes to telling my story to them and telling them what I believe in them about, how they are enough, how, how and, I, and I say it faster and more aggressive and more passionate because I don't want one kid to miss out that he has me on this earth to help grow in their mind that they too can become. And so if they take their job away from me again, I will reach all the people that he has set forth for me to connect with. And so, yeah, I believe winning is easy, even though I've been fired, but I also understand what my assignment as a human being is, is to help young people believe those three words. They are enough. Coach, from the lessons that you have taught your team and how basketball and life kind of come together, to go back to the beginning of this season, you, you had a personal situation that you had to go through and medical situation that you had to overcome. In going through that, what were some of the lessons that you have taught your players, your kids through the years, wherever it shall be, that maybe you had to kind of enact yourself, that you had to listen to some things that you have taught them to, to get through that experience? Oh, that's an <laughs> that's a, 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 a interesting question. What I taught them prior to the season is that this is a player-led team. I didn't realize how much of a player-led team it was going to have to become. Because when you now face with, you're just going to get your eyes checked and they have to do an MRI because my peripheral is bad and all of a sudden I have a brain tumor and now I'm shut down for, we don't know when. I had to lay in that hospital bed for the month of October trying to figure out what the fight really means. How do I overcome and how do I get back in, in line? And it's faith. I, and I, I had to really go deep into my faith. I, I made lots of calls to specific people to just pray with me, to pray for me, to help me get stronger in that so that I can have enough to, to endure uh, what I'm going through. And um, family became uh, the most paramount thing in my life. My sisters, my brothers, my husband was a... Uh, the anchor uh, behind this whole recovery still is. And and what, what I, I've learned is that even through pain, you have to continue to fight. So standing up was a hard thing for me to do. But I outside my window was a, a view of the of the dome. And I thought about my players in that dome practicing without me and how much I felt like there's more I needed to share with them. And so standing up was all I needed to do. And even through pain, I stood and I fought and walked in those hallways and, and everybody cheering. And those people there at you know, Upstate Medical were just amazing. And there's enough in us to continue to fight till there's no breath and there's no more life. And you fight to the finish. And that's why those three words that we say and everything that I ever tweet out, we fight on, it, it took a stronger meaning. Coach, how has that experience changed you? as a coach? You know, I'm not so exciting, excitable, if you will, on the sideline. You don't see me overzealously coaching this team for a couple of reasons. One is they're player led. And second, my energy has to be controlled uh, from what my doctor said in order for me to have, have this season that I'm having. And I can, I, I can put myself in a position of not being in good health if I continue to be at the voice for its level that I'm more comfortable with, to be honest. <laughs> so I, I, I really calmed that down. And now when they gave me the bill of health, hundred percent bill of health, I felt like I, I was more relatable to the players that I was coaching. And it's easier for me this way now because I see the change in the players so much more. So maybe this is a, a God wink, if you will, that less can also be more. Coach, we have certainly seen you brought up that energy that you you bring to life, frankly, not just coaching, right? Like everywhere you go and to be told by your doctors to calm down, to rest, to just fight every urge that you have just to live the life that you do. Was that the most, was that the most challenging thing you had to go through was to just to just lay back in, in that time? You have no idea how many times I looked up into my heaven and, and talked to my God and said, really, really, <laughs> this is what you're asking of me? <laughs> and yes, he said, he said, trust me. 
and lean on not your own understanding and trust in him with all your heart and he shall direct my path. And this path has gotten us to 23 and six, an opportunity to have a three seed uh, husband that follows me everywhere I go because he still doesn't think I'm out of the woods yet, even though the doctor said, <laughs> he's fine. I enjoy his company so much. So I, I am so grateful. And so, yes, God is always on time. May not be there when you want him, but he's always on time. And on that note, Coach, and I'll close with this, uh, everything's led us to this point, the season that you've had, the three seed, tying the highest seed in the ACC tournament, a, a well-deserved double buy, by the way, as your team had to play 18 straight, Thursday, yes. Sunday, Thursday, Sunday throughout. The opportunity, perhaps, to, to play for a home game, which leads to a path if the, the cards fall the right way, maybe to have the opportunity to play for a regional in Albany. It's, it's all ahead of you. So yes, to be a it is. So to be as successful as you want to be, how is this team going to do it here as you go forward as we are now in that postseason one-and-done territory? We're going to put our head down. We're going to tend to the sheep. We're going to give our best effort. And after every opportunity that he blessed us with, we're going to all look in the mirror and hope that we all can say we left it all out there and there is no more left for us to do. And if we can say that, this game, this season can go on at least nine more games. That's Coach, we luck. wish you the best of luck in that. It's been a fun ride so far. It's It's been great to just see the, the personal things that you've had to overcome and see how your team has re responded to that and uh, much more to come. Like you said, let's, let's ride this thing nine more games. But uh, in the meantime, thank you for your time and your perspective and coming on with us today here on Syracuse Sports. It's always great to talk with you, but we appreciate your time today. Thank you. We fight on. Go Orange. <laughs>